part three of the Buzz Bubble interview with George Lois. On the Buzz Bubble. I went to Doyle Dane and I really, uh, I was talking about Bob Gage and, and Phyllis Roberts, and they, they did an incredible thing, and they had a, a set reputation of being the only creative agency, the creative agency in the world. I worked at Doyle Dane for a year and I just kind of plowed through the place. I did, I mean, Burnback loved my work. It was edgy, it was, it was edgier than most of the work. A lot of the writers were very shook up about West, a lot of contractors too, very shook up about yeah. what I was doing. You know. That's good. Very shook up. I was there a month and they, uh, there was a, a posse of, of them. It was an art director and four women writers who went up to Burnback to say, look at this what this George Lois is doing. Look at this work, you know? And it was stuff that Burnback loved, loved, you know? In fact, Burnback said to them, uh, patted him on the head and said, George Lois is a cross between Bob Gage and Paul Rand, which is a great compliment to me. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'll see ya. And then, <laughs> so, so I was there for a year and I wasn't looking to leave. Man, I wasn't looking to leave. I loved that place. I loved everything about it because if you were an art director there, if you were a talented art director there, and there were Bob Gage, Bill Taubin, Helmut Krohn and me, we were the four best art directors in the history of advertising. We were sitting right next to each other. You know, I'm telling you, it was and murderous, it was murderous row. Yeah, I wow. mean, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, each guy was turning out incredible stuff, you know. But that was it in the field, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, those, to me, there was those four rooms. Right. You know, I'm serious. So one year at so Doyle Dane. So what, but what happened, I knew everybody a guy. Everybody thinks you spent your, uh, half of your career Oh, there. yeah, everybody thinks I was there for, <laughs> I was an old vet of it, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, so what happened is uh, there was a, 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 somebody I had met, a writer I had met at Southern Hennessy, working for, uh, with uh, Herb Blue Ballon. A guy named Fred Pappen, and he had started an ad agency, uh, he, him and his wife and some other, an art director and his wife, and, and they went bust after a couple of years, and I had done their letterhead and stuff. And he comes to me at all day, and he said, George, he said, yeah, yeah, what he called, this is a chance. You come to my agency, I already have accounts, bullshit. <laughs> and he showed me a graph, you know, business will go up and up and up and up, you know. Good you, graph, of course. Uh, <laughs> you draw that all by yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Wow, what a... I gotta get in on this. Yeah, right. Anyway, so I said, get the fuck out of here. You know I mean? <laughs> but I thought about it that night and I said, you know what? There's gotta be a second great creative agency. There's gotta be a second. Right. It, it can't last this like this, you know? And the idea of a second creative agency, uh, you know, real creative teams, you right. know, guys like, uh, like me, was oh. unheard of. I mean, I mean, it was like, what? You do what? So I told him, after a couple of days of thinking, I said, okay, let's bring along a writer. Julian Kenning and I decided to leave Doyle Dane Burnback. And this all took a, a couple of days. Right. It's a Christmas party, and yeah, we're going we're gonna to tell him in a couple, a couple of days at the Christmas party, and at the Christmas party, Burnback gets up and said, what a great year we've had, blah, 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 it's fantastic. And the most important thing was, this agency brought the lights of the talents of a George Lois and a Julian Koenig, right? And Koenig said, we can't leave now. <laughs> and, and I said, yes, we yes, can. We yeah. So I, anyway, I had to do some persuading with the Koenig, and so I said, we're going to do it. A couple of days after that, I said, I'll meet you at the elevator. We'll go upstairs and talk to him. Okay. Who's going to talk first? He said, uh, I'll talk, you know, I'm the writer. Okay, you, you open it up. There we go, we sit down to see Burnback. We walk into Burnback's room, he almost had a heart attack because he could see something's going on. Right. We didn't have an ad in our hands, and he goes and sits behind his desk. I, had, I didn't even know he had a desk in his office. He always, always, and he said, uh, <clears throat> what can I do for you, George, Julian? And Koenig said, I'm looking at Koenig, and he doesn't open his mouth, and finally he says, uh, Bill, George, and I are leaving to start an ad agency. You know, Burnback almost had a heart attack. I mean, first of all, I think he thought we were stealing Volkswagen, right. and I, I, you know, and I said, and I immediately said, well, no, John, we're, we're, no, we're, we're, we're not taking it, we're not going to blah, blah, blah. But Burnback said, and he meant it, what everybody thought, George, there can only be one creative agency in, in the world. <laughs> yeah. He said those words, and he meant it. He's a brilliant man now. And he meant it. This is, you can't duplicate what's here. And I said, what well, you can, the way, what you got here is you run the show. 
you know, a, a Doyle is a count guy. He doesn't run the show. Dane is a, is a goddamn bean counter. He doesn't run shit. <laughs> you know, you run the show. You decide everything here. And as long as a creative guy, a great creative man, person can re runs the show, you know, you decide what counts to that. You decide what counts to throw out. If there's any compromising on, on any work, you do the compromising, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's us, you know. And I think I have the talent. You sure have the talent, but you're going to be one great, one great, not what great, one creative agency. And, and when I, when the, everybody in the agency heard that we were leaving, they all were going cuckoo, cuckoo. I mean, everybody. <laughs> well, the, the, you guys are crazy. One. I mean, uh, guys like Bob Gage, who were, you know, I really, uh, uh, you know, respect you, said, George, you're making a terrible mistake. You know, I mean. Is he the one that told you don't go out there? No, they, they all <laughs> say, yeah, no, they all saying, don't let you know, you're going to. We started. Papa K. Lois, and we were successful in, in a week. Wow. I mean, I mean, you knew, I mean, we were getting stories about the things we were doing in a week. We got a story in Time Magazine a week later, a couple of, a month later on, on work we about. did, not on bullshit. Oh, really? Not on about work we did. No, we got, we, we, we didn't have any accounts. We just got them, boom, 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 you know? You know one of the first accounts we got was uh, Halloid Xerox. Oh, jeez. Yeah, changed the name to Xerox. Right. Uh, nice account. Us starting in that agency, that's what triggered the so-called creative revolution. I mean, Doyle Dane, it, it, everybody th talks about the advertising re creative revolution of the 60s. Doyle Dane was the mother of the creative revolution in the late in the 50s. And what we triggered a revolution because then out of our agency in, in two or three years, uh, people left our agency, like Carl Alley started a creative agency, Scotty McCabe Slows came out and our agency, Wells Rich Green, uh, uh, Dick Green came out. So what happened before, in a couple of years, by 63 or 4, there were 4 or 5 or 6 creative agencies, and that was a creative revolution. And that changed the, the advertising world. And that's and everybody why, built that on the model and of... And that's why those 60s, when you talk about Mad Men... Yeah, I want you know, to get we, to that. We, when you talk, <laughs> That Mad Men is a, is a show about the Ew. same bullshit, terrible hack, you know, wasp, you know, marketing bullshit agencies, yeah. you know. Do you watch? Are you, are you? Uh, oh, no, I can't watch. <laughs> I watch a little bit of it. I mean, I, I gag, you know. I, I, anybody who understands the 60s. Well, that's why I'm here to talk to the, anybody the man who really lived it. The heroics of the 60s. We were, it was a heroic age. Yeah. I first heard about Mad Men. People were hearing about it, and I was getting calls. Hey, George, they're doing a show about you. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, it's about the advertising agency in the 60s. I, you know, I was the epitome. Yeah. I, and I started my ad agency in January the 2nd, 1960. Okay. You know, uh, in, in, in the Sigma building, you know, classy as hell. It's about you. It's got to be. People say, it's about you. Or, or then you're the consultant. I said, I don't know anything about it, you know. And then I started to hear more about what the show was about, and uh, it was about to premiere, and I get a phone call from one of the producers. Uh, uh, Mr. Lois, yeah. um, you know, we're doing, uh, we're, we're going around town, and we're, we're finding out who the, I think he said the real mad men right. were. I think he used the term. You sure. know? And we're doing like little, uh, uh, we're interviewing them, we're doing like little th uh, things. I, I think he was he, promotional, I didn't quite get what he was going to do. Then I, for a while I thought he was going to put it on a show. And um, I said, oh yeah, well, you know, who you got so far? And he named five people I never heard of. Right. You know, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know that. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, you know, and, one of them, and, and then one that I did hear was Bill Birnbeck's son who, who who took over, who became the chairman of the board after Bill died. Right. And now these are people for technical directors or to, uh, to talk about what really went on and, and based the show? You know, they, so he's saying, uh, we're gonna, no, no, he, I don't know. I said, and he said, well, everybody we talk to mentions you as uh, important in the 60s. I said, you're doing a show on advertising in the 60s, you never heard of me? He said, well, That's no, so I've wrong. heard of you. you know, you know. Right, right, uh, now I have. Well, I've heard of you. Uh, I said, listen, listen. Um, I, I, I'm getting a smell about the show, what your show's about. It sounds like you're doing a, you know, a gray final suit, uh, you know, a, 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 a you know, bullshit movie about hack, a hack a marketing agency, you know, all these bums getting laid and they're screwing their secretaries and having, yeah. and, having uh, and, and three martini lunches and doing all kinds of, uh, 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 yeah. Well, if you want to know what the 60s was about, when anybody who hears about the 60s in advertising, they immediately, if they know anything, they immediately think of the creative revolution. 
right. immediately. Yeah, yeah. And they think of me, and they think of the agencies that follow me, Mary Wells, and they think of uh, that, that, right. That's it. That's it for part three of the Buzz Bubble with George Lois. Tune in next week for part four on the Buzz Bubble.